Happy Sabbath viewers. We welcome you to our lesson uh, discussion uh, for the Sabbath. We thank the Lord that uh, as we have been going through the conflict uh, series, we are now on lesson four. And the topic is standing for the truth. With me here, I have Sister Spora and uh, Jared. I invite Jared to say hi. Happy Sabbath, dear viewers. I'm happy to join in this particular week's lesson discussion. Happy Sabbath, viewers. You are welcome to join us in this discussion. Amen. Thank you. My name is Zablon Mabea. We, we welcome you to today's discussion. Uh, Jared. Yes, sir. Whisper by prayer. Okay, let's as believe even as we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much because of your faithfulness unto us as your children, to the extent of revealing unto us these wonderful truths that we have now gathered here for to study. How we pray that the Holy Spirit that inspired the men to write these words, that he may also reveal the same unto us, and may they find a place in our hearts together with the listeners. For this is our prayer of faith, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Uh, Jared, you can read for us the memory text taken from the book of John, chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. So uh, the memory text is John, chapter 3, verse 14 and 16, uh, 14 uh, to 15, it says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Thank you. Um, the memo text uh, reminds us something very significant about our focus. And um, Jesus Christ um, talking to his disciples and the people were there, uh, reminds them that um, Moses in the wilderness, uh, while leading the children of Israel, uh, faced a number of challenges. Some of them were uh, complaining and uh, had even rebelled against God. Mm. In the process, God removed his protection and the snakes, portion of snakes started biting. Yeah. Uh, the children of Israel. Mm. Uh, when they cried to Moses, Moses cried to God, mm -hmm. who told him to make a serpent. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, whoever was bitten, mm -hmm. that was a commandment of God, mm -hmm. that can only be safe mm -hmm. or healed mm -hmm. if he or she mm -hmm. looked at the serpent. Mm -hmm. So the question is, mm -hmm. is it the serpent that healed mm -hmm. or it is obeying the commandment of God. Mm -hmm. And so today's lesson, what we see as the Israelites were healed by believing mm -hmm. that actually it's God who healed, who healed them because they obeyed his command. Mm -hmm. And uh, in lesson for this uh, week, we are going to go through a number uh, of um, believers Mm -hmm. who went through a lot of uh, painful experiences, mm -hmm. but they remained faithful uh, to the uh, truth, the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And I think it is so inspiring for all of us, and it helps us okay, to remain faithful mm -hmm. to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we, we are taken back to the um, the New Testament, Mm -hmm. I'm also the book of Revelation, uh, chapter uh, 2, verse 10. Just mm -hmm. want to read this. Revelation, chapter 2, verse 10. Uh, the Bible says, Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, mm -hmm. the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Mm -hmm. What is interesting is that um, this is a message to the church in Simeana. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, as the servant of the Lord uh, tells the church is that they will go through some tribulations for mm. 10 days. I think that is a prophetic or symbolic, mm. Mm. 10 days. And we see as John is recording, that's John the Reverend, mm-hmm. he was trying to encourage the church and the believers mm-hmm. uh, that they remain faithful mm-hmm. because God was their uh, shield and protector. And uh, what we see is that although most of the believers went through this persecution, mm-hmm. but we find that they, are, they remain faithful Mm-hmm. throughout that history, in spite of what they were going through. Mm-hmm. And uh, as we go through the lesson, it reminds us that um, most of the believers, Christians, suffered a lot mm-hmm. of suffering. Uh, we have the case of Paul Cup, I think one of the first martyrs in the, the uh, apostolic period. Mm-hmm. And uh, in that city of... Uh, Simna, mm-hmm. which I think this now this time is called Ismir. Ismir. Yeah, they had um, uh, strange gods. One of them was Dionysus, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who was, uh, uh, I'll say, a god of uh, fertility, mm-hmm. god of wine. Mm-hmm. And these people used to have very strange rituals. Mm-hmm. And the people in the city used to go once uh, to worship this. And uh, somebody like Paul Cup and other Christians refused, and eventually they were penalized. Mm-hmm. But what made them stand out is because they remained faithful to their God, mm-hmm. faithful to his word, faithful to his promise mm-hmm. that actually he will lead them to eternity. Mm-hmm. And so this is really an inspiration for each one of us. Mm-hmm. And the question I may even ask is, I know we are not going through violent uh, uh, persecution, mm-hmm. but is there persecution in the church? Yeah. Do we have persecution in the community? Mm-hmm. So persecution comes in many forms now. And the devil, as we will be seeing, has been changing his strategy, mm-hmm. either compromising the message or misquoting the Bible. Mm-hmm. And so it's something we need to be aware of. Mm-hmm. And for us then to stand out for the truth, then we must be grounded. The word of God. Amen. So I, I, I find this lesson so encouraging mm-hmm. because as we will be going through, we'll be seeing what the believers, the Christians of the past, and the reformers went through as um, they underwent persecution and what inspired them to remain firm for the word of God. Mm-hmm. Um, Sister Spora, we have... A prophetic period mentioned there. Mm-hmm. 120 prophetic days standing for 1,260 1, 1, years. Mm-hmm. So I think it looks one of the longest periods in the mm-hmm. prophecy. Mm-hmm. What were you getting out of this lesson about this period? Thank you, Elder. Um, in our introduction, we see that... Um, people who stood firm in the word of God were persecuted. Mm-hmm. And we are given a period in history, mm-hmm. uh, which is the longest uh, period of spiritual darkness, a period that covers 1,260 years. If we look at this period, what we will see, we are going to see two groups. Mm-hmm. One group standing firmly for the Lord. Another group fighting against this group. And the group that stands firm in the word of God stands firm because they have or they depended upon God. Mm -hmm. And what we are going to see again is that as they stood firm, in spite of the persecutions, God provided a way out. Mm -hmm. I want us just to look at what the writer is telling us in Daniel 7 verse 23 and 2.25, where we will see this prophetic period being mentioned, uh, which says, He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, that is the devil, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, 
and shall intend to change times and law, then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and have a time. Mm -hmm. But the court shall be seated. So we wanted to reach verse 25. So prophecy is always fulfilled. This was foretold or was foreseen. And indeed, this period, as we go looking at what happens, we see the persecution of Christians starting in the year 538 AD, going all the way to 1798. Mm -hmm. The period may not be very significant, but what is significant is that what is said in Daniel is also confirmed in Revelation 12, 6 and 14. Mm -hmm. But what we see in Revelation 12, 6 and 14 is a little bit, you know, it's a complementary of the other. So what happens when you are persecuted? How does um, the Holy Spirit guide? What happens to these people when the, the persecution uh, takes place? So that is Revelation 12, 6 and 14. My brother, you can read. All Revelation right. chapter 12, verse 6 and yes. 14, verse 6 says, And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Then verse 14 says, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Thank you, my brother. What we see in this scripture mm -hmm. is that the prophet or John the Liberator has mm -hmm. been shown mm -hmm. things that will happen, mm -hmm. but God has guided that the woman, as we all know, viewers, mm -hmm. the woman stands for the church, and mm -hmm. the woman is guided that then the woman fled into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. But this awareness is not a place where she will be abandoned where she has a place prepared by God himself. Mm -hmm. Indeed, that during persecutions, our safety is in the hands of God. Mm -hmm. Our safety is the word of God. Because the writer says that they should be fed or that they should, they should feed her there 1,260 days. The mm -hmm. period was long, but assurance is given that during this persecution, the, the the faithful will not be on their own. They will be fed. In other mm -hmm. words, they will be nourished. Mm -hmm. God will be in control. He will take care of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you go to 14, it, uh, it further says that, but the woman was given two wings. When I looked at two wings, maybe somebody will help me. Mm -hmm. When you talk of two wings of a great ego, we know an ego as a bird that soars high, high, high. Mm -hmm. Very sweet. Very mm -hmm. swift. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the woman, and in, in this case the church, has been given wings, therefore what we are saying is that God is in control and is going to give uh, protection to this woman that she or the church mm -hmm. that she is able to flee mm -hmm. from the persecutions, from the, the evil one, and find protection in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. So what I take home is that indeed as Christians... Um, the work of God, the more we do it perfectly, mm -hmm. the more we attract the wrath of the devil. Mm -hmm. And that wrath does not mean that <coughs> we give up, but we are supposed to remain firm. I'm mm -hmm. consoled by the words in Psalms 23 verse 4, uh, which I always uh, like referring to. Mm -hmm. Psalms 23 verse 4, which tells us, uh, it says this, Ye, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, mm. I will fear no evil, for you are with me, you are rod, and your staff, they, they will comfort, comfort me. me. Mm. In other words, yes, Christians, like in the medieval times during this spiritual darkness period, even today, as we go through evil, no matter the magnitude, the word of God is admonishing that we will not be abandoned. We will not be on our own. Mm -hmm. That God will take care of us. God would, 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 
could surround us and give us protection. Mm -hmm. And one more thing that I have seen also, Ella and my brother from from Scripture, mm -hmm. is that uh, in the second, uh, in, the, in the first Corinthians ten thirteen, mm -hmm. if I may paraphrase it, that uh, the things that happen around us are not mm -hmm. uncommon, mm -hmm. including persecutions. Mm -hmm. They happened during the time of the prophets. They happened to Jesus himself who was persecuted and finally killed. They happened in the early church. They're happening today. Mm -hmm. They are not uncommon. Mm -hmm. But when they happen, those who remain faithful to God, he will provide a way of escape. That nothing that happens to man, that when we remain faithful, will will not uh, will not be able to 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 bear. God mm. will provide a way of escape. So uh, I, as I come to the end about this persecuted yet triumph, I want to say this: during this period of two thousand one thousand two hundred and sixty years, many people died. My question is: me, would I, if I were there, would I have stood firm? Viewer. These persecutions were so intense, people would be uh, pushed even to the public arenas and they would be killed in public. And some of them, uh, you know, uh, could be set a place. We know one who sang until his spirit stopped as he was burning. Would mm. we have stood firm for Christ? Persecuted yet triumphed. How shall we triumph in persecutions? Mm. We need to depend <clears throat> upon the word of God. We need to surrender ourselves to God. Above all, we must understand the will of God so mm. that that will of God will lead us, will be able to abide by the word of God after having understood it. Mm. Thank, you. Thank you, sister, for uh, taking us through. Indeed, uh, this group were able to stand because they trusted in God's promises, mm. trusted in his word, mm. And so, the wonderful promises that even if they die today, but because they have trusted, they have an eternal kingdom. Amen. That's powerful. Uh, we are discussing on Monday about the champions of the word of truth. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we see uh, Jude. Mm -hmm. admonishing the church to the three I first four. Mm -hmm. My brother Jared, yes, uh, as we are going through the, that uh, advice or admonition to the church, it is reminding us, because the first champions mm -hmm. uh, were actually Bible-seeking uh, believers. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be seeing through the wildernesses, uh, who are the followers of Peter Waldo? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not built uh, Peter Waldo led a team of people to seek mm -hmm. uh, the truth from the Bible, mm -hmm. and how were they able uh, to stand and mm -hmm. the great things that they did? Perhaps you can take us through what are the kind of things, great things they did. Thank you so much, Elder. So let me just read Jude three and four. It says. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, and godly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. No, I I look at um I look at this week's lesson from the introduction part when it talks about standing for the truth and I asked myself a question why does it mean the truth can't stand for its own <laughs> <laughs> must somebody else stand for the truth and mm -hmm. thinking through this in the light of great controversy then I realized that uh you know like the man we were reading about Polycarp the elder in uh, the ancient Smyrna. Uh, he he made a statement. Uh, he made a statement when he was uh, asked to disavow Christ. Mm. And this old man, I, I was meant to understand, he was eighty six years. I can mm. just believe mm. how this man uh, looked like. And he says that eighty six years have I served him, and he has done me no wrong. So he knew him personally. He says he knew him personally. Mm -hmm. 
I think I would be even wrong to say he was 86. Probably he met Christ when when he was at at some age. At some age. So he he has been with Christ 86 years and he says I have served him and he has done me no wrong. Then he asked, how can I speak evil of my king who saved me? So at this particular point it appears to me that this man, this elder is now willing and ready to 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 confirm or rather to seal the words of his testimony now by his blood and he actually he goes ahead and does that now i look at this um uh, uh, this particular people you know somebody may ask we are just talking about people who in the past suffered and were killed mm-hmm. it's not that we are, we are not advocating for human rights <laughs> <laughs> neither are we doing a research on the same but the fact that these people had the choice to make for Christ or against him but it somehow it appears that they they loved Christ more than their own lives mm-hmm. and they make this particular choice for Christ that to them death is just nothing and the fact that this man he talks about Christ as a friend I've served him for 86 years and he has done me no wrong so mm-hmm. how can I disavow him now we we see this particular spirit extending in time and as uh, as in the book of jude we are just reading and here is an admonition that honestly contend you know some these are some of the words that i read and i mm-hmm. i post to reflect if somebody says they want you to contend you know contention itself mm-hmm. is it 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 involves deliver, deliberate effort but mm-hmm. then he says i want you to honestly contend mm-hmm. for the faith that was once delivered to your fathers So to somebody like me a youth in this generation I'll probably sit down and say the faith that I enjoy today there are people who suffered for it mm-hmm. there are people who suffered to the extent of uh, laying their down their lives for mm-hmm. for this particular uh, for their faith now he says here that uh, elder introduced the waldenses and i believe we are going to look at them more uh, in the in the in the coming days so we see these people as a, a sect of uh, people who are very faithful and people who probably you will say they didn't have a 100% truth because but what they had that they kept what they had that we see them keeping and uh, they also desire to uh, they study more in an they have that passion it uh, that passion in them that desire to learn and learn much more and uh, we we see here that uh, the same way that those the the, the uh, people like polycarp gave their lives you know when uh, madam zipora you were taking us through the previous day we you mentioned that when you're talking about uh, the child the woman given wings of an eagle and then there's a sect there that say that Uh, to the wilderness where god has prepared oh. so it really meant to me that ah kumbe god has prepared a place for this mm-hmm. particular church in the wilderness mm-hmm. so though in the wilderness but there is that aspect of god has made some uh, preparation so this is a point i took home from that that um uh god has the desires and concerns of his church in his hands mm-hmm. and as such he knows uh, the, the destiny and what sure. the church wants at uh, the destiny of the church and what the church want uh, wants at every particular time and uh, throughout all ages these are from uh, great controversy page 61 ellen white says that uh, god has had uh, she says in every age there were witnesses for god mm-hmm. and there are men who cherished faith in christ as the only mediator between god and man and who held the bible as the only rule of life and they hallowed the true sabbath so these Amen. are people who it 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 probably seems like their entire life was dedicated to studying the word of god to beholding christ and uh, and uh, and and as such so what i took personally from this particular day we are talking about light that uh, vanquishes the darkness you know uh, when i'm i'm always imaginative sometimes i read like this and uh, i reflect probably the room we are in was full of darkness then you go to the switch and switch it on mm. i don't know which one of our past the other but mm. what i know is there's <laughs> now ultimately there's light light melts darkness light melts darkness and darkness disappears yeah sure. so this is the same thing that we are going to i believe uh, in the, the the next day we are going to look at uh, how this the world dances while they were in their hiding places 
how they took uh, uh, their ministry seriously. In fact, uh, some writer even says that sometimes the the the, the youth were, 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 were memorizing huge sects of scripture. Mm-hmm. How I wish that the youth of today we will be like the Waldenses Amen. and to take this upon ourselves to love the word of God and to memorize these huge sects of scripture that we may even quote them uh, in face of temptation. So uh, finally, uh, in that particular last day, we see uh, some promises that God uh, gives to those who are faithful to him, even in the face of death itself. Elder read to us uh, Revelation chapter 2 verse 10, mm. which says that uh, the devil will cast some of you into prison. And it, in fact, it says that some of you will even die. But the same question that uh, was asked by Zipporah in the previous day that, if those people are willing to die, how about us today? Then I sit back and reflect and say, it is not a decision. I can wake up today and decide I'm going to die for Christ. Then I must have walked with this Christ. I must have known him personally so that whatever things he tells me that because I live, you also shall live. I cannot fear those who will only take away life, who can kill the physical body but mm-hmm. live. Uh, 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 who will not harm the spirit. So like these people had the hope in them, the hope that uh, of this particular Christ, who they also, by the way, I realized uh, people who have received Christ as their friend and uh, who Christ dwells in their hearts, they are always very quick to share this Christ with others yeah. because they don't want to keep him uh, to themselves. So this is the same thing I see with the Waldenses. Probably they will decide in the caves where they were, Let's just stay. At least there is no danger here. Mm-hmm. Let's just be with our Christ. But in as much as they were there safe, but they still made an effort to share this particular light with others. And as such, we see now today we can always talk about, we can talk about we have a faith. And there's something we were discussing previously. Elder said that uh, they made the first translation of the Bible into their local mm-hmm. language. So these people are really devoted to... Um, uh, to the word of God, and this is the uh, uh, this is the, the the spirit I see in them, and that because they loved Christ, some of them never even changed their own lives because of the love they had for Christ. Mm-hmm. Thank, thank you, so. thank you. You know, uh, this, reading the last line of uh, <laughs> Revelation two ten, mm-hmm. be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of of life. life. Mm-hmm. Wonderful promise because, um, you know, when John is writing to the church in this seminar, mm-hmm. uh, they had these goddess, they uh, the nurses. And uh, we are told that uh, whenever any of the priests mm-hmm. died, mm-hmm. he was always buried with a crown. Mm-hmm. So he's writing to actually <clears throat> giving them a picture they understand. Yeah. And they were able also... Uh, the the wildernesses were able to see the promised crown by Jesus Christ, mm. which is much more valuable. Mm. And this really inspired them to go ahead. Mm. And uh, the other thing I think which comes out very strongly is that as they were going through, the entire world was going through persecution. Mm. God himself was looking at truth seekers, mm-hmm. scripture seekers, and he was able to reveal the light. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes when we go through the challenges, mm-hmm. what I see is that we remain true seekers of the word of encouragement from the scriptures. Mm-hmm. And as we focus upon the scriptures, God is able to encourage us in the process. And indeed, uh, the story of the wildernesses is very, 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 very uh, uh, significant because we see they were able uh, to stand mm. for the truths of God's word. Mm. And one thing as, which comes out very strongly is that they were so passionate. Mm. And whatever word, because they are not even read the entire Bible, whatever, they might not have understood. Mm. But whatever light they had, mm. they were willing to share. Mm. You know, the challenge is, if we are told to go out for mission, 
most of most of we are looking for uh, an evangelist we are looking for somebody from out there mm. but you know we have fertile ground within our neighborhood mm. within our work and environment mm. that we can be able to minister and you know i, I used to have a very interesting uh, uh, insights in so many groups of people mm. uh, where i used to work i used to have two bibles mm. and the quran mm. so as people were reading then when there is a Muslim coming in, then we could be able to have an interaction on the, the, the word of God. Yeah. And in the process of what you find that you are being edified more than even those people. Mm. And so the lesson we are getting here is that the more we get involved in seeking the truth in the word of God, mm. actually God is edifying us. Mm. And this is why the wildernesses were able to endure all the persecution. Uh, Peter uh, Waldo himself read this team of uh, uh, Bible seekers and uh, he was able to translate now the Bible into actually one of the modern languages, mm. the first translation ever done. Mm. And because of the passion he had with this group, even the young people were encouraged. So parents, do we have a role to encourage our children to um, uh, memorize scripture. And I think, I don't know whether I see it these days, but I remember when we were young, we used to be told, and I think we need to continue it. Mm. And so they were able. And then what is interesting is that even where they were in the universities and the schools, mm. they were able, as they scanned around, when they see a receptive uh, person mm. to share. Mm -hmm. So they had also this passion of copying the scriptures. And you know, honestly, to have that kind of a passion, then you must be truly connected with God. Yeah. And I'm praying that God may help us, mm -hmm. that we may have this passion. Because when we have this passion, God will also be able to help us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And these people were able now to stand because they were receiving this word and message from God himself. Mm -hmm. what, we have to, what the lesson writer tells us that, you know, one of the distinction characteristics of the wildernesses and each one of the reformers was their absolute mm -hmm. allegiance to, to God, God. Mm -hmm. their obedience to the authority of Scripture, their commitment to the supremacy of Christ, not the purpose. Mm -hmm. These, their minds were saturated with New Testament stories of faith and courage. Mm -hmm. I think also when we go through the Bible and see all the apostles who were persecuted and how they stood, look at Peter. Mm -hmm. He stood, he was being stoned, but he's saying, I see who? Christ. Mm -hmm. Are we able to stand? Mm -hmm. So we need to read the Bible to be able to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. And we also need to make God, our focus mm -hmm. in everything that we do. Mm -hmm. So this is what he was able to make the apostles, Peter and the others, when they were fully converted mm -hmm. to stand for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, Sister White uh, tells us uh, from the great controversies, the Waldenesses were one of the first groups to obtain the Bible in their own language. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. you, you know, this really passion for you to be able to translate, mm. they had a burden to reach to their own people. Mm. How do we have a burden, a burden to reach to our own people, our own families mm. with the word of God? Mm. This is what actually compelled them to be able to do. And they became expert copists, copying the word of God, the scriptures, mm. to be able to share. Mm. Now, as we see, and I think as um, Jared has mentioned, these people didn't have, I would say they would not be able to understand the entire scripture. Mm. But God was able to reveal the scripture mm. gradually. Mm. And therefore, the word of God, as we continue reading, God will be able to be revealed to us some things gradually. Mm -hmm. There are some things God may, may not reveal, may not reveal to us immediately because sometimes they can even cause us whatever, mm -hmm. uh, may alienate us uh, from Him. Mm -hmm. But then God, uh, focusing and seeing that actually we are 
so much passion about uh, knowing, uh, hearing his voice and knowing his will, mm -hmm. God will gradually help us to understand. So, what we see then, during that period, it was a dark period. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, do we still have a dark period? Bibles are all over. Mm. I know I have Bibles in my car, we have Bibles in the houses, mm. several of them. Mm. But what is really interesting is, we have sometimes Bibles, we don't read them. Sometimes it's worrying how we only get serious with things when they are scarce. Yes. Like those people in, uh, previously, they didn't have the Bible and yet they were very seriously looking uh, in search for the truth. But today, yes. we have them everywhere. But as you mentioned, probably we rarely touch them. So what strategy is the enemy using so that we don't read the Bible when it's available to us? And I think that's something we need mm. to prayerfully think about. Mm. Yeah. Because we have all these books. We have a book of a spiritual prophecy. We have the Bibles with us. But still, the enemy has kind of put some darkness. Mm. And so we really need to be prayerful about this and deliberate mm. to set time uh, aside to study what you know, I was just reading about the the late uh, uh, what is uh, Okola. The uh, somewhere they mentioned that you know he used to look for some time, at least about two hours, to be alone with God, the Word of God, and I was challenged. How much time have I said to be alone with my God? Mm. Now, let's talk about John Wycliffe. John Wycliffe. John Wycliffe. John Wycliffe. The morning star of reformation. Sister Nyangwenchi. Thank you, Elder. Um, many questions uh, have been asked. And uh, one of them is like, we have so many Bibles. Some are even in our phones. We walk with them. You click and you, the Bible pops up. Whatever you want to read, you can find it. You can read even when you are. Um, on transit. But why don't we read? There's that spirit of compromise which mm -hmm. we have seen earlier, that the devil has stopped being so confrontational and has given us, uh, I, I can say, I don't know whether to say it's the one who has given us, but um, there is that um, desire for other things. Mm. Like we want to get the best education, we want to become famous, we want to acquire wealth, and so we are so busy in other things, and God has been given a secondary position. Uh, the pastor recently preached and said, this is how you know that um, you have been compromised and God has left you completely. You start mm -hmm. a prayer and you sleep before you finish it. Viewers, how many of us have gone through that experience that mm -hmm. you have started praying in your bed and before you finish, you have slept? Or someone is praying, before the prayer is over, you have started remembering your business and your mind has wandered away. Mm -hmm. That is the work of the devil. Therefore, we really need to be intentional in the way we are looking for our God and search and get actively involved. Otherwise, it's not easy. So we are looking at the morning star of the Reformation. The Reformation is a great period in history. And this is a period mm -hmm. we see many people coming up to bring Reformation in the church, to bring more light into the church, mm -hmm. to bring, you know, correction uh, in the way things were done. And during this period that Reformation is trying to take shape. The Reformers mm -hmm. faced a lot of opposition and persecution from um, the, 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 the devil. Mm -hmm. But we want to look at Scripture and find out these Reformers, as they did their work and as they read and searched Scripture, how was it for them? Mm -hmm. We have asked ourselves a question. We do not delight or we do not find a delight in reading the Word of God. Was it so? Or does it mean that the Word of God is so boring? How does Scripture put it? If you look at um, Psalms 19, mm. verse 7 to 9, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, mm. converting the soul. Mm -hmm. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Mm -hmm making wise the simple. So you can mark those words. The law of God is perfect. 
the testimony of the Lord is sure. The statutes, verse 8 says, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. Mm. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean. So you can see that indeed the word of God is everything that you can think of that is perfect. It is pure, it's clean. It gives de delight. And uh, even if you went to the next verse, which is Psalm 119, verse 140, Mm. You see other adjectives or used to, to, to describe the word of God. So 119 verse 140 uh, says this. It says that um, your word is very pure. Therefore, your servant loves it. Mm. If the word of God is very pure, the, your servant loves it. Who is the servant of God? Me and you are servants of God. The Bible is admonishing and saying that the word of God is clean, is pure, is perfect. Yeah. It's everything that is, 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 is good that you can think about. And the servant of God finds joy and loves it. This is what happened to the reformers. That the word of God gave them joy. Unless you find joy in the word of God, unless you delight in the word of God, unless mm. you look at the word of God as pure, as perfect, as sure, as right, mm. as clean, as sweet, mm. as, uh, you know, as great or one that gives great reward, mm -hmm. you cannot uh, give it that uh, priority. Mm. We are told that each of the reformers that we are talking about, John Wycliffe, we talk about many others, uh, Martin Luther and many others, mm -hmm. these reformers rejoiced in the word of God. Amen. They delighted in doing the will of God. The word of God must give us joy. It mm. is meant to give us joy. It is meant to give us peace. It, 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 we are supposed to delight in the will of God unless we find joy. Mm -hmm. And this is not our own making. Mm. We need to surrender. We need to see the role of the word of God in our lives. Mm -hmm. We need to give space to the Holy Spirit. We need to pray that the Holy Spirit uh, takes over. Mm -hmm. We read in the great controversy of a mother of Has. Could we call it Has or Hus? Has. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So this lady um, prayed for the son and asked that the Holy Spirit may, may guide the son to do that which is right. Mm -hmm. And our prayer did not, it was not in vain. Mm -hmm. This man Later, he grew to become very intelligent and uh, stood for God and uh, became one of the reformers in, the, in his time. So, therefore, we are given John Wycliffe as the star of the Reformation. And this is what the writer says. The character of Wycliffe is a testimony to the educating, transforming power of the scriptures. Mm. John Wycliffe studied scripture. Mm -hmm. He searched scripture and he delighted and find, found joy in it. And the writer, uh, that is uh, Ellen G. White, tells us that the character of Wycliffe, therefore, is mm -hmm. a testimony to the educating, transforming power of the old scriptures. It was the Bible that made him what he was. Amen. That, that the effort to grasp the truths of revelation imparts freshness and vigor to all the faculties. It expands the mind, sharpens, uh, uh, freshens, and gives vigor to all faculties. Eh? Mm -hmm. it, uh, uh, the study of the Bible will also uh, ennoble every thought, mm -hmm. feeling, aspiration, as no other study, study can. can. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you continue, you will see that indeed there is no perfect, there is no book that sharpens the mind and makes one uh, a great person in terms of thinking, in terms of knowledge as the word of God. Mm -hmm. Because people who have started the word of God, like John Wycliffe, they are described as being very wise, very, um, uh, you know, I can say they, 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 they made right judgments and they stood <coughs> firm in the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so I ask myself this question, and no wonder the courage they had. I ask myself this question. There's, the Bible is a small book, huh? or you can call it small or big. There are many books that we read 
when we are studying for exams, we read so many, especially those who become doctors or some these mm. some of these great uh, professions. Eh? Mm. But they are able to go through all of them and they can they can, they, they, they remember and they pass exams. Mm. This Bible is for us for the entire period that we live. But there are so many portions maybe in the Bible that we do not understand because we have not taken time to do so. Mm. So really we need to take time to 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 read the word of God. If you go to Timothy, 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 3, mm-hmm. uh, what you see or what Paul is admonishing is the need to share the word of God. Mm. Teach the others what you have gotten from the word of God. Yes, we come to church, we read, we, we are taught, we have knowledge. Do we have the courage to reach out? John Wycliffe and others reached out. The truth of God's word and the joy of salvation in Christ so fulfilled the hearts of reformers that they had to share it. Mm -hmm. It's a challenge to all of us. Mm -hmm. Do we share the word of God? How much do we share? Do we even share it with our children or the people we work with in our offices as elders said? Do we do that? John Wycliffe spent his life translating the Bible into English. Mm. And for us, it's so easy. We have no effort. The, the Bibles are in our languages. Mm. If it's Ithuru, if it's Kisi, whatever it is, Kiswahili, the Bible has been translated mm. into all the languages and addressing every community or most communities in the world today. So we mm. do not have the struggle that the, the early church had. What then hinders us from reading this? So that therefore, even as we we can be stars of some sort, stars mm-hmm. of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So, but what we get, therefore, at the end of it is that we have a role to play. Mm-hmm. John Wycliffe played his part. We have a role to play to make this word known. We have a role to play in the Reformation process. Elder, mm-hmm. you correctly put it that God does not reveal his word in entirety, just to a, a certain generation. The revelation and the reformation, therefore, is gradual. And uh, so, therefore, every generation has a role to play mm. to, 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 to ensure that, indeed, the, 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 there is light in darkness, to, to ensure that the word of God, which is truth, has reached everyone. And unless we understand the word of God, which is the source of truth, therefore, we will not participate in this story of remo- reformation as uh, others did. Mm-hmm. What is astonishing and why I wonder, John Wycliffe died mm-hmm. after serving God. Finally, he dies. Mm-hmm. He did not have very nice life. He was persecuted and finally he dies in the service of God. Mm-hmm. Why would someone, after many years of his death, mm-hmm. come and exhume the bones, <laughs> burn into ashes and throw into the river so that the ashes are taken off. What 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 is the meaning of that? Viwa, do you have an idea, my elder, my brother? <laughs> what can you say? What would why would some what would someone gain in so doing? Very very fundamental question because it reminds us that we are actually in the great controversy. Mm. The enemy is very active, and as we saw in the last lesson, is that he wants to darken, he wants to mislead. And therefore, he passionately, passionately hates the light of God. Mm-hmm. And you see, like John Wycliffe, to be honest, he was the star of formation. And I want to ask our uh, viewers, are we stars of God's gospel message? Mm-hmm. Because he understood, and together with the other reformers, uh, and they rejoice in the word of God. They will not only rejoice, they love the law of God because as we read in the, uh, uh, Psalms 19, we will read through, you will see that actually it's because the word and the love of uh, the, the law of God revives them. Uh, the law of God uh, gives them uh, strength. And besides that, it lights their bath. Mm-hmm. So reading the word of God is a guideline. 
in a righteous path. Mm. And I think this is what um, compel John Wycliffe and other reformers to remain, to stand firm for the truths of the word of God. Mm. And ultimately, as we are moving on on Thursday, uh, we see the book of Hebrews. Christ taking our nature, mm. flesh and blood. Mm. What is the significance of that, well, my brother Jared? Thank you so much. I, I just want to pick it from uh, the question that was asked by Sister Zipora. Why will say she asked why will somebody exhume uh, the body and then burn it into ashes then throw into the river? Mm. I was also wondering, but what I found here gave me hope that uh, the same way that the ashes of this man uh, was dispersed by the waters is also the same way that God's word, the water of life spread far and wide, mm -hmm. wide as a result of what he had done. Mm -hmm. So as Elder mentioned, we are in the great controversy, yes, and uh, we know uh, the, the real forces that are are, are, are in, in battle. So though ma men and women probably would have exhumed the body of uh, this faithful man of God, yet probably there's a force that is working behind them. So we just as part of that. Great it was just a future attempt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so when when you look at uh, I I wonder as Elder is saying from the book of Hebrews we see Christ coming and taking the nature of humanity accepting to be he does not see any problem being made a little bit lower than the angels and uh personally before I even relate the experience of uh, the Waldenses and all the uh the martyrs the fact that Christ has taken on humanity and that he retains that body for eternity it really should give us hope as uh, as 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 men and women who are now uh, listening to this because uh, it takes a very great amount of immeasurable love for a god the creator to take the form of his creation and to retain that forever so we look at this and the question i kept asking myself was what is it that made these people, despite having the choice, they could decide to make the choice for their own lives. Mm -hmm. But somehow they decide otherwise. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody like, uh, like you are mentioning, Wycliffe, after his death, then probably the lives that they lived were not so interesting. Probably they were not so good lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At, at least in the lenses of, uh, of a, human uh, being. a human being, probably they didn't have all that this world would mention as successful. So then I ask myself, what is it that cheered the hope of uh, uh, these particular people? Then the lesson writer uh, leads us to an answer in John chapter number 14, verse 19. In John 14, verse 19, Christ says, uh, let me just read it quickly. It says, that yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. Mm -hmm. But you see me, because because I live, you shall live also. Mm -hmm. Amen. So this is a promise that these people took personal. Such are the promises they took personal, and uh, they had faith in the promises of God. So they looked beyond what was at that particular time mm -hmm. to what will mm -hmm. be. And they knew that through the resurrection of Christ, death was a defeated foe. Mm -hmm. And for them, uh, the, the, the stranglehold of death was broken and they clung to the promises of God's word and they came away victorious. You know, I was looking at this great controversy. What is it that uh, makes it great? Because yeah. we, there are many controversies. Then somebody will ask, what is it that makes something great? For those who, uh, for the viewers who probably like games and the football matches, when there's a great game, it means they are, two serious sides at play. Yes, yes. But now when I look at this other controversy, of course they are two serious, but one has already lost the, the game. <laughs> has already lost the game. So then 
to me it shifts from uh, from merely the powers in action probably to the timing that, and the choices that humanity is supposed to make mm. so the fact that god himself chose to become man and dwelt among humanity showing the world this particular amount of love then i think the best thing for us dear viewers to do is we cannot do anything bad we cannot respond negatively to someone who has already done us so much good mm-hmm. look at the experience of uh, jonah has who would not falter in the face of imprisonment injustice and even death itself mm-hmm. and he languished in prison for months there was a writer says that cold damp conditions brought on a fever that probably nearly ended this man's life nevertheless the grace of god sustained him and during the weeks of his suffering that passed before uh, his final sentence this man had heaven's peace that filled his soul and he wrote a letter and in his letter to his friend he says in my prison uh he said to a friend that in my prison and with my fettered hand expecting my uh, sentence of death tomorrow then he says that when with the assistance of Jesus Christ we shall again meet in the delicious peace of the future life mm-hmm. you will learn how merciful god has shown himself towards me how effectually he has supported me in the midst of my temptations and trials so these are very encouraging words mm-hmm. and uh, probably you i can see i can see somebody who is aware that he is in fact he says i expect my death sentence tomorrow but this the way he speaks he doesn't speak like god has forsaken him mm-hmm. he speaks like he knows god is still with me and i'm going to go through this because of the bond we have together with him mm-hmm. and he says he even uh, uh gives the hope of meeting again later on so I pray for such peace in my heart <laughs> mm-hmm. that we can be able to endure persecution. You know, in the recent weeks we had uh, the NTV uh the what was it? Exposing yes, that something. exposed something that it touched our church and I saw the reaction of uh, some of our members <laughs> and it was like uh, it was like uh, something was being forced down their throat. So mm-hmm. we would wonder if this is just uh, some somebody just giving news on some probably something he has found that touches on probably a sect of other people but you already feel like uh, the knife is on our throat yeah. then how about when it gets to a point like this where because if there are people who champion for human rights probably John has had na- done nothing to warrant being in prison and want to die but now you can imagine him in this condition he knows he has nothing wrong he's there because of Christ mm-hmm. but at the same time heaven's peace has filled his heart because mm-hmm. he knows that Christ is with him and because of the hope that is set before them this is cheering them on and i like the hymn we sing that how cheering is the christian's hope mm-hmm. so i hope and pray that we also christians of today we will find a uh, hope and uh, we will find hope in the promises of god's word that he has promised that he is going to prepare a place for us that he shall come again and uh, where that where he is we may also be so i desire and i, I really hope uh, my dear our dear viewers that uh, we will also find uh, peace and comfort in the words of christ and as he said that because he lives we will also live mm-hmm. may we be like these world dances may we find uh, may we find uh, 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 may we find it pleasure to study the word of god and to walk with him to an extent that uh, we will disregard any other thing but regard christ as a uh, all and all to us so thank you so much i think thank that you. is what i have you know, for that day. perhaps viewer um you could be going through uh, challenges mm-hmm. in your life going through darkness but uh, i want us to be encouraged by this word that uh, the reformers were encouraged by their hope in christ amen because jesus christ has power over life mm-hmm. he has power over death and fundamentally power to forgive amen if there is something that is keeping you away from the lord mm-hmm. just come to him jesus he has power to forgive mm-hmm. and it's because he's our creator mm-hmm. and this gives us the hope the strength to continue as we wait for his soon coming. Just want to invite my sister 
spora mm-hmm. to do the final prayer. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father God, we want to give you glory. Thank you for this far. And thank you for the many uh, truths that you have revealed unto us. That indeed, we, like those who have come, who came before us, should stand for the truth. And today, and even before, you have taught us that the truth is your word. As we endeavor to do so, we pray that Lord, your Holy Spirit, may fill all of us, including our viewers and anyone else that Lord you created, so that together we may study this word, we may understand this word, we may live by this word, and that Lord, we may preach this word. Thank you, Jesus, because you came and you taught us the way to go, and you promised that you will come again. As we prepare for your return, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit may continually walk with us to do that which pleases heaven, to grow in stature and in wisdom, to serve man and to serve you for your own glory. Thank you because you have listened, and thank you because again you will walk with us until we meet again next Sabbath to listen even more into your word, to understand more, to move closer to you. We know that the devil has many traps and many uh, sideshows just to compromise the truth, but we pray that uh, you will abide with us so that forever we shall stand for the truth, for this is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, viewers, for joining us in a lesson discussion. We trust that you have been blessed. And they, may the Lord keep you safe until we meet next Sabbath. And we'll be happy to have you with us. <laughs>